Guys, look at this city. It's alive. Hello. Hi. Drugs. Doctors. Haircuts. A bar. Guns. Surplus. Lord, this city's wonderful. And we even got noodles. Geeks, what is going on? Unite the Clans here, back in yo life with another episode of Fallout 4. There he is, Cowboy UTC. I like this look. We're gonna keep it up, guys. We are just outside the gates of Diamond City. We made it here last episode. We met Piper, we met Mayor McDonough, and today we continue the adventure. Let's go track down Piper. We'll meet her in her office and we'll see. Girl wants to write a story about me. Can't blame her. I'm very, very interesting. These are the gates. There was a guy named Sullivan here who was getting crap from the mayor. You Sully? You Sully? You're that traitor Piper was talking about. That's right. Now, was there anything particular you were looking for? Yeah. I don't know if I want to Not give this really guy too business. much info. All right. Sorry I asked. Yeah, we're at odds with old Danny Sullivan. That's cool. The guy wants to keep Piper out of town. I like Piper. So I don't like him. Done. This is Fenway Park, guys. Oh, yes. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. Let's go first person mode. I don't know why we got the foggiest day in the history of Diamond City. I can't see a damn thing out here. Hey, there she is. There's my girl. I gotta head into the office. You start whistling if you see any angry politicians coming our way. Why? Is something wrong? Hey. Hey, what Denver are you running away? If the Institute grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. The Institute. They snatch people up in the night and no one hears from them again. It's all in the paper. Better read up before they grab you, too. Jeez. You think that's who, who could have Sean? Guys, this is Nat. I believe her to be Piper's sister. She helps run the paper. She tells me that the Institute is responsible for taking people somewhere. I can look for Sean. You're a smart kid. Isn't there someone in town who isn't afraid of this institute? Well, there is the detective, Mr. Nick Valentine. Oh, we gotta leave, y'all. Anything. If anyone's gonna help you, it's him. Thanks. You were a big help. Remember, the institute's out there, newcomer. Watch your back. Will do, kiddo. Will do. This is the newspaper. I guess. The Synthetic Truce. Read by Piper Wright. <laughs> noodles. We all eat them. We all love them. And Diamond City's Power Noodles has supplied the sustenance for the past 15 years. The ordering and eating of noodles is but one of many shared human experiences. Or is it? I was struck by this very question as I sat at the counter of Power Noodles last Wednesday night, just after 5 p.m. enjoying a dinner I had so many times before. That's when I noticed our very own mayor, McDonough, sidle up to a stool and engage in the very same ritual, right hand extending, mouth opening, teeth chewing, yes, eating noodles. The shared experience of almost every Diamond City resident. So it must have seemed to the residents of Diamond City, nearly 60 years ago, on an uncharacteristically warm May evening in 2229, as they sat around this very same counter. But that was before the days of Takahashi and his noodles, when the bar served not noodles, but ice-cold Nuka-Colas, frothy beers, and stiff shots of whiskey. The barman's name was Henry, and that night, he facilitated the shared human experiences of drinking, smoking, talking, and laughing sounds like a good time. That is, until tragedy struck. There aren't many among us who are even old enough to remember that evening, although some of the city's ghoul residents certainly could have. Had they not been forcibly removed, thanks to Mayor McDonough's anti-ghoul decree of 2282. But there is one person among us who does remember, distinctly, the events of that evening. Respected matriarch Eustace Hawthorne, who recounted her story in a Public Occurrences exclusive interview. Oh, I was there, all right. Sitting right at the bar. Sure as sitting in front of me now. 
20 years old or so, and just looking to have a good time. And let me tell you that Mr. Carter made it easy. He came into town earlier that day, said he was from out west somewhere. That night at the bar, we all just sort of crowded around him. Everyone wanted to exchange a word or hear about the state of the Commonwealth, and Mr. Carter, he was all too happy to oblige. We'd been drinking and carrying on must have been three hours. Mr. Carter had four or five drinks in that time. He seemed a bit drunk, I guess, like the rest of us. Then something just sort of happened. He was smiling, but the sort of smile went from his face all in an instant, and then his cheeks started twitching kind of funny. And I remember I was watching him clear as if it happened just yesterday. He reached inside his coat, took out a revolver, and then BAM! He shot Henry the barman right in the head. Didn't hesitate, didn't show any emotion. Mr. Carter killed Henry as casually as if he were paying him for a drink. But his cheek never stopped twitching. Let me tell you, all hell broke loose after that. What Eustace is describing is, of course, the infamous event known as the Broken Mask, when the people of the Commonwealth learned for the first time that the Institute, the shadowy scientific organization responsible for the creation of combat androids, had actually succeeded in creating a model so advanced it could effortlessly infiltrate human society. Like I said, all hell broke loose. The guards came running, they opened fire, and Mr. Carter, he kept shooting, kept throwing people around left and right. Finally, those guards put him down. Seemed like they had killed a man who had flipped his lid, gone crazy, and there he lay, a dead crazy man, sure enough. God, it was horrible. But then, we saw the plastic and the metal. This was one of the early synths, you see. We realized it wasn't a man at all. It was then we all knew the Institute wasn't just out there. The Institute was everywhere now. Among us. What mattered was that the humans of the Commonwealth had been truly infiltrated by an organization whose intentions and motives were, and still are, a complete mystery. Using a model of synth even less advanced than the ones the Institute has in service today, which brings us to noodles. Specifically, the noodles consumed by Mayor McDonough last Wednesday, in the same spot that Mr. Carter, the synth, went haywire and mercilessly killed several people. After spending hours sharing an experience the people of Diamond City assumed was reserved for members of the human race. They were wrong. Are we? I get Mayor McDonough's point. That is inflammatory, I tell you what. She's suggesting that he is a synth without presenting any information to, the, to, the, to support her case. That's public occurrences. That's Piper's newspaper, guys. I'm glad we read that. We might have to stay on guard. This girl's not printing facts. All Faith's Chapel. Super Salon Power Noodles, guys. I see the mayor. Lord. Are you Takahashi? At $44 cup of noodles. Go screw yourself, you damn robot. You know what? Who, you talking to me, resident? I'll see you later. Is this McDonough? Where's McDonough? Guys, look at this city. It's alive. Hello. It's so alive. Who are you? Hi. Drugs. Doctors. Haircuts. A bar. A butcher. Guns. Surplus. Lord, this city's wonderful. And we even got noodles. Oh, we're getting quests like crazy in here, guys. That's okay, we're staying on the main quest. We got things to do, people to see, girls whose hearts to steal. Valentine Detective Agency. Let's go meet Piper first, okay? Alright, geeks, let's go meet the gorgeous, lie-spreading... <laughs> Piper. God dang, look at all of these quests. We're getting quested up, security. Yeah. 
Guys, I'm a completionist. If this were just me, I tell you, I'd be playing this thing. I'd be exploring every nook, every damn cranny. But, uh, we gotta stay on point. We got a story to tell, and that story is through this door. Oh, what's up, pipe dog? Look, I'm just gonna say it. You're a vault dweller. You might not be wearing the blue jumpsuit, but the pip boy and that fish out of water look? Dead giveaways. So here's mm. the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in I'm not a normal vault dweller, darling. Time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. What, do what you about say? dog meat? Geeks, we are talking to the gorgeous Piper. She wants to interview old UTC. Hear the story of how I emerged from a vault. It ain't no ordinary vault dweller story. All right, Let's Piper. do this. I'm in. Good. Let's get down to business. So, I know oh. you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? Brief. Let's give her the whole truth. My family and I were frozen. I didn't spend much time in the vault. W wait, <laughs> They boxed you up in a fridge? The whole time? Are you saying you were alive before the war? Yes. Yes, I was. Two hundred years old. I'm an old oh man. Oh my god! The, the man, man out, of out of time. So you've seen the Commonwealth, Diamond City. How does it compare to your old life? Confusing as hell, darling. You know what? Honestly, seeing everyone. Let's tell a good here, story. Rebuilding the world. It gives me hope. That's surprisingly inspired, Blue. We're Blue. definitely quoting that. Now, I already know you're looking for your son, Sean. Do you suspect the Institute was involved in his kidnapping? I do now. Sure sounds like they might be. Not even a baby is safe from them. And people wonder why I can't just look the other way. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? No matter don't how give much up. you want to give up. Do don't. not give up. You have to have hope that you'll see them again. Or at least that you'll know the truth. A strong note to end on, Blue. Thanks. That's everything. It's going to take some time to put this all together, but I think your story is going to get Diamond City plenty to talk about. Anyway. I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. Whether I am truly hopeful or not doesn't matter. This girl is writing a story, and this story is going out to people who need that hope. I spun a tale of hope and the potential for a good life. Boy, am I glad we came here first, geeks. Piper, you know, the smoking Piper, Never smoking hot, could consider themselves a success until someone threatened their life. is going to join me on my travels. This girl is going to come with us to see Detective Valentine and maybe find Sean. Piper. Darlin, Heading my way. Sure. Let's, go. let's go. Will do. Roll with me. Send dog meat to Sanctuary Hills. We'll see you later, beast. I like her. All right, girl, let's go. Let's hit the road. Hit the damn road. Run it. What are you sitting down for? Didn't I just say come with me? Just let me know. Sure, let's go. Let's hit this town. Hit it. Run it. Don't do it. Please. It's big, loud, full of corrupt officials. Oh! Citizens. Guys, what the hell's going on here? What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? I swear, I'm not a synth. Don't shoot, for God's sakes. We're family. Can I disarm this fool? Put the gun down now. He's a Sith. He'll kill us all. Oh! Kyle, no. Okay, show's over. There are what no if he is a Sith? <laughs> okay, don't do it. Don't do it. Just you folks in your damn paranoia. God Lord. We didn't need to kill the man, did we? Ours now. He pulled a gun on me. My own brother. I'm sorry, dude. 
I'm also sorry I stole all his clothes and stuff. I, uh... I need a minute. Fair I need enough. You to step away, scabber. I ain't no scabber. I understand, officer. I just want to know what happened. Just go about your business like nothing happened. Nothing happened, that dude. Way. You just blew a dude's brains all over the damn... Go back to your own damn... Infield. Go about your business. Whew. Geeks, thank you so much for checking out this episode of Fallout 4. We met Piper. We did the Story of the Century interview. And now she's joining us on our quest. Joining us on our quest to find our boy Sean. And next episode, that quest will continue in the office of Detective Valentine. Until then, though, I'm Unite the Clans, and I will see you geeks in the next episode. So maybe we just gotta kill old Mrs. Donahue here. She's dead. Good. Oh. Oh. Put her out of her damn misery. Uh -huh.